Today I'm going to be taking a look at Solus OS, which just had a new release. This is version 4.7, and I'm excited to take a look at it because I haven't looked at Solus in a while, and there for a while it looked like Solus, as far as their development, you know, there were some problems. It looked like that this distribution could be one of those distributions that just disappeared on us, and thankfully they've solved a lot of those issues that they had a couple of years ago, and it looks like it's back and stronger than ever. They've got this new release out. They've got four main flavors. If you're unfamiliar with Solus, it's an independent distribution, so they maintain their own repositories. It's not Debian-based. It's not Arch-based, right? So Solus OS, independent distro that uses the Budgie desktop environment. That was actually a desktop environment they created like a decade ago for their distribution, but now they also have other desktop additions as well. They have Solus Gnome, Solus Plasma, and now Solus XFCE, which is beta. Now, I'm going to take a look at their flagship Budgie Edition. I've already installed it inside a virtual machine. I'm not actually going to show the installation process on camera. They use the familiar Calamaris installer. And if you've seen one distribution with the Calamaris installer, you've kind of seen them all. A few distributions do some customization with the Calamaris installer, but Solus in this case uses a very plain kind of vanilla Calamaris installer, nothing fancy, no extra options and customization options or anything like that. It's just a normal Calamaris installer that you click OK three or four times and you're done in about 10 minutes. So this is Solus OS 4.7 using Budgie, of course. Uh, they are on Budgie 10.9.2, uh, I believe, is the version number. If I go to Budgie, uh, Budgie Control Center, maybe, will it actually give me the about information? Let's see. They gave me some information about my virtual machine, but I'm looking for Budgie version, yeah, 10.9.2. And you can see the OS name, Solus 4.7, code name, Endurance. So that is a very cool code name. I like that. And I think the Endurance name, obviously, is they've overcome, you know, some problems here recently. So I think it's a very fitting code name as well. And one of the things that jumps out at me as somebody that's tried Solus OS many different times over the years, I've installed it on physical hardware, run it on my personal equipment, installed it on other people's machines, installed it many times in VMs over the years. I can't help but notice that they have scaled down the size of like the panel and the icon. You know, they're a little smaller than some of those past versions I've used. I mean, it's perfectly fine. Uh, if you, of course, wanted to scale things up, of course, you could go into the settings and change all of this. I just, you know, that was one of the things that jumped out at me is it's a little smaller than it used to be. Let's go through the menu system and see what is installed out of the box here on Solus OS Budgie. If I go into the accessories category, we have Budgie Screenshot. This is just your standard kind of screenshot utility. Very simple, but you know, very functional as well. Also under accessories, we have our calculator, we have GNOME disk, we have Ingrampa, which is the archive manager. Isn't that the one that, uh, is that the one that XFCE uses by default? Let's go to About in Grandpa. No, that's Mate's. Uh, and Grandpa is the archive manager for the Mate desktop environment. Also under accessories, we have Gedit for our plain text editor. We have an image viewer. It doesn't tell us which image viewer. If I go to Help and About, this is X Viewer. 3.4.7. So it looks like kind of a mix and match of various GTK based applications. Uh, some, you know, uh, GNOME applications, some Mate applications, probably some XFCE applications. Uh, Kaja is the file manager. Of course, that is going to be uh, the file manager from the Mate desktop environment. This is Kaja 1.28.0. It is strange though when I open it what is going on with the black background. Uh, you can't see the text. It's very strange. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure exactly Yeah, what's going on there. Yeah, that is very odd. And of course, I have this is a fresh install. I'm looking at this for the first time with you guys. This is inside a virtual machine, but I doubt the virtual machine has anything to do with the theming of this application. I think that's probably a bug. I go back into accessories here. Uh, Nemo is also here. So that's interesting. So Nemo is probably the file manager they plan on you using. So Nemo is the file manager. Is that the one for uh, Cinnamon? Uh, I forget. It's Nemo for Cinnamon and Kaja for Monte. Either one. Either way. I, I may have that mixed up, but both are here. Yeah. So they probably expect you to use Nemo. I imagine that's really your file manager is Nemo. 
This one here looks like it's kind of broken. Uh, it's strange that they have both here. Moving on, we have a graphics category. Nothing is here except LibreOffice Draw. Under the internet category, really nothing here. You know, not a lot of things installed here. They've got just a bare minimum kind of desktop suite of applications here. We've got Firefox for our browser, Thunderbird for our email client. Let's see what version of Firefox they're on. I should mention again, if you're new to uh, Solus, you may not know much about this distribution. It is a rolling release distribution, although it's not like bleeding edge rolling release, like a Arch or a Gen 2, but it is rolling release. Those of you that are on older versions of Solus, you don't have to reinstall you don't have to go get the new ISO and do a fresh install. You should just roll directly into this new version of Solus. Uh, Firefox. Let's go into the menu system, go to help and about Firefox. This is Firefox 134.0.2. Let's close that out. Back to the menu, we have a Office category and we have the full LibreOffice suite here. So we have Writer, Impress, Calc, and Draw. Uh, let's go ahead and open up LibreOffice Writer, see what version we're on here. And yeah, let's get rid of the release note announcement. I'm just going to go into help and about LibreOffice. And this is LibreOffice version 24.8.4.2. Now, I will say the theming looks a little weird. You know, it's very dark and black here. Now, this is not a GTK application, LibreOffice. It's not GTK. So, you know, the theming is a little weird here. Uh, at least it looks a little off to me. But when you start mixing and matching GTK and Qt applications in a Linux distribution, it always is weird. This is not a soulless problem. It's a problem really with every Linux distribution. We have a sound and video category. Not much here. We have... Rhythm box for our audio player, and we have celluloid for our movie player. Under system tools, we have you know just various settings and configuration tools that you would expect. So your control center kind of things like your printer settings and your system monitor, your budgie control center, which is where you would go and, for example, change the background. Let's go ahead and look at the background. Usually I save this for the end, but let's see what kind of wallpaper pack they've got here. Yeah. Really nice wallpapers. I've seen most of these before. I mean, a lot of these are from older versions of Solus. I remember that one from several years back. I remember that one as well. That was a very nice minimal wallpaper, especially if you're going to use a dark theme. This really white wallpaper really stands out for contrast. And of course, if you want some greenery, this one here is very nice as well. Matter of fact, I may just keep that one. Yeah. I can rock with that. One other thing I want to check out is I do want to check out the software center because that was one of the things when I was reading the release notes was they're really uh, trying to change from the software center that they've been using here. They would actually prefer people to go install GNOME software center if you're on Budgie or GNOME or on XFCE. So those three uh, flavors of Solus, go install the GNOME software center and quit using this thing. Or if you're using uh, the KDE Plasma version of Solus, use the Discover Software Center, which should just ship with the KDE Plasma version anyway. You shouldn't need to go get that. And I think that kind of makes sense. Is you just go use the existing software centers that are already available on Linux instead of trying to you know, maintain your own. I think that's a smart choice for me. I typically just do everything in the terminal anyway. Matter of fact, let's open the terminal. That's something we haven't really played with yet. So let me search for the terminal. And let me make this full screen and let me zoom in. What terminal are they using? This is probably the GNOME terminal, but let me go to about. Yeah, this is the GNOME terminal version 3.54.0 for GNOME 47. Of course, in this case, it's for Budgie 10.9.2. First of all, let's see what kernel version we're on. If I can type correctly, you name dash R, we are on 6.12.9, so a very recent kernel. Some other things we should check. We probably want to see if they are using a pipe wire. So let's do a where is pipe wire. See if the pipe wire audio server is here. Yeah, you can see there is the pipe wire binary. So it's installed. Let's also see if they are, of course, Budgie is still using X11 out of the box. So let's do a echo dollar sign, all caps, XDG underscore session underscore type. And you can see it is using X11. This is not Wayland yet. 
Let's see if Flatpak is here. Let's do a where is Flatpak. Flatpak is installed. Let's see if anything is installed as a Flatpak out of the box. So if I do a Flatpak list, nothing is returned. So Flatpak is available for you, but nothing is automatically installed as a Flatpak. So if you don't want to use it, you don't have to use it. You know, I'm, I'm not going to go over that. I know some people get all in a tizzy <laughs> over things like Flatpaks and Snaps and App Images. If you're new to Solus OS, they have their own Custom Package Manager, EOPKG is their package manager, uh, EO Package, and um, why the EO Package name? I'm assuming, uh, if I remember correctly, Solus was not originally named Solus. They were Evolve OS, I believe, so I think that's probably why it's the EO, Evolve OS, you know, Package Manager, EOPKG. But if I wanted to do a search, I could do an EOPKG search and then name of package that might be in the repos. Let's search for something, uh, I don't know, Discord. Proprietary software, but I don't know their stance on proprietary software. They may have it packaged. They do. All right. And of course, even if they did not have that packaged in their own repositories, Discord, of course, is available as a flat pack, which is here as well. To install programs using EOPKG, you would, of course, need sudo. So sudo EOPKG and install and then name of package. Uh, I don't know, Vim. They may or may not have Vim already installed, but this is just an example. There are some extra dependencies. Do you want to continue? Type yes. And so I guess it wasn't installed out of the box since it let me install it here. And I may keep this virtual machine around for a while. So, you know, if it didn't have Vim installed, I would have eventually wanted that anyway. So I'm glad that's there. If you wanted to remove something, you would do sudo EOPKG. Instead of install, you would remove name of package. If you wanted to upgrade your system, you would do a sudo EOPKG upgrade to update all the packages on your system. Let's actually run that just to see how many packages are needing an update. Actually, none. Now, this ISO just came out like a day or two ago. Uh, and again, it's, it doesn't roll the way Arch rolls because Arch, you know, hell, you could have, you know, 200 updates like every day on an Arch-based system. So it doesn't roll quite like that. One other EOPKG command you could use, you could do a EOPKG info. You don't need sudo for this. Just This is just getting information about a package. I don't know, HTOP. And it gives you the uh, name and description and the license and all of that, the dependencies, you know, the information you would expect from a command like that. By the way, is HTOP installed? It is not. So let me up arrow. I'm going to go back and do a sudo EOPKG install HTOP because I will check system resource usage. And you guys know I typically always do this with HTOP. That way I'm always using the same program to do this. That way there's no discrepancy between the various uh, system monitoring programs because they all can use a little bit of different CPU and RAM. So I try to always use HTOP for this. And you can see CPU usage, uh, nothing really going on. I'm not doing anything that should suck up CPU right now. Memory usage, we're using about 850 megs of the four gigs of RAM I gave this VM, uh, that's pretty normal. I would say that's uh, that's about normal for Budgie, at least in my experience in the past. It's not a real RAM hog. I, I wouldn't say it's necessarily lightweight, but it's nowhere near as heavy as GNOME, for example. So let's go ahead and close out of HTOP and close out of the terminal. Yeah, overall, you know, Budgie is still Budgie, right? This latest version of Budgie looks like the older versions of Budgie. And of course, they're always tweaking it and updating. No, but the menu system looks the same. The little uh, sidebar, you know, the little pop out sidebar, the Raven sidebar menu here thing that they have uh, that has your widgets and notifications. All of that looks the same as well. Uh, but it looks good. You know, one of the things I love about Solus and one of the things I really love about the Budgie desktop environment is that people familiar with Windows, like you, if you used Windows 7, Windows 10, Windows 11, you're used to a panel at the bottom with some quick launchers and a start menu, like anybody that's ever used Windows could use Solus OS with the Budgie desktop environment 
and feel right at home. That's why, you know, over the years I have installed this a few times on different people's machines and for the most part, everybody really liked it. And in just the few minutes that I've played here with Solus 4.7, looks like a fine release. I, I think this is going to be a, a pretty big hit for them. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. And of course, I'm talking about Matt, Steve, Armor Dragon, Cap Caveman, Darloff, Dayless, George, Lee, Methos, Erion, Paul, Peace Arch and Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Morgento, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick first look at Solus 4.7 would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.